trying to record, but there's a train going by. At least the dog's not barking. No, you you can't be in the video. I no, you can't be in the video. What do you? You just asked me, can I be in the video? Gosh, he's so desperate for fame. Hey guys, glad you're watching. We're doing things a little bit differently. <laughs> Hey guys, so glad that you're watching. We're doing things a little bit differently for 678. We're doing it all online. We're doing it through Zoom and watching videos of me talking about the Bible a little bit. But what I want to talk to you today about is heroes, okay? I want to talk to you about heroes. So do me a favor. Think about some of your favorite heroes. I know for me that Batman's one of my favorite heroes. Uh, and you can think of, of anyone in particular, but every hero, you know, they do cool things. Some of them have powers, um, but no hero gets where they are just because. They all have an origin story. They all have a beginning. Their story starts somewhere, um, whether it be Spider-Man uh, with his Uncle Ben. To remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Or maybe it's Captain Marvel, uh, who got super strange powers and lost her memory. <laughs> or maybe Elsa from Frozen. It's really quite simple. It began with two sisters. One born with magical powers. One born powerless. Their love of snowmen, infinite. I don't know, do I? Blast! Oh, Mama, Papa, help! Slam! Door shutting everywhere! Sisters torn apart! Well, at least they have their parents. Their parents are dead. They all have an origin story. And what I want you to think about is if we're going to be heroes, if you, you wanted to be a hero, what would your origin story look like? Where would you come from? And the thing is, is that every single human has an origin story and it talks about that story in the Bible. Um, so we're gonna look at Genesis chapter one where this is the beginning of our origin story. And this is the creation account where God made um, the world. And it says in verses 26 through 28, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So this tells us a few things about our origin story. One is that God made us, okay? God made us because he is loving and he is generous. But not only did he make us, but he made us in his image. Not everything in creation can say that, just humans can say that God made them in his image. And this doesn't mean that we physically look like what God looks like. But what it means is that we're God's image bearers, okay? That God made us to represent him within the world and to rule with him in that world. And we see that in this too. The second thing is that we see that we are made with a, per with a purpose and we're made to partner with God. That God, he could have done anything that he wanted all on his own, but he decided to partner with humans to subdue the earth, to rule over it, to be fruitful and multiply. And so God chooses to partner with humans. But the thing is, is that they have to remember that he is God, that he's the one in charge. He's the hero of his story. And so what happens is that through the story of the Bible, we see that God chooses uh, a man named Abraham and says, hey, you're going to have a family. That family is going to become a great nation. And that nation becomes the nation of Israel. And God says, this nation, Israel is going to be my image bearers to the world so that the world might see how good I am and that I love them and want them to know me. 
So God rescues them out of slavery in Egypt. And then he says, hey, I'm going to establish you in this land. I'm going to put you in this land that's really, really good place to live. Like for them, this is going to be paradise. Okay, for us, it'd be like living in Disney World. It'd be awesome. Uh, So he puts them in this land and he says, hey, but don't forget that I'm God. I just want you to be obedient to me. I just want you to remember that I love you. And he said, what's going to happen is you're going to start to forget. And he's right. And the people start to think, you know what? We did a lot of really hard work to get ourselves here. We're pretty important people. And God sends people time and time again to remind them, "Mm, you didn't do any of this on your own. It was actually God who rescued you out of Egypt. It's actually God who gave you all of these good things. And so the people started to try to make themselves the hero of God's story. Okay. And so what happens is that God, he doesn't sit back and just let things happen. He jumps into the story again himself. In Colossians chapter 1, we read this about Jesus. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. And so what this is telling us is that when Jesus came to earth, when God came to earth as Jesus, as a human, that Jesus is the visible representation of who God is. He is the bright image, the the unmissable image of who God is. He is the central hero, the main character in this story, okay? I want you to think about it like this, because we're still called to be image bearers of God, that when you go out at night, you can see a little bit around if the moon is out, right? You can see a little bit where you're going, but the moon isn't its own light source, Okay. The moon just reflects light from somewhere else, and it reflects the sun's light. But during the daytime when the sun is out, you can see everything. Okay, And Jesus is kind of like the sun. Okay, He's bright. He's lighting everything up. He's the visible image of the invisible God. And we, as image bearers, are kind of like the moon, and we reflect the sun's light. Okay, And so that's what our call is, as heroes And our day and age and our time is to be. But what it means to be heroes is a little bit different than what the people in the old stories of the Bible thought that it meant. Jesus is going to flip that up on upside down and on its head. Uh, And so we're going to talk about that in group. So I would encourage you to think about what does it mean to be a hero in God's story where he's the main character, okay? Because it's not going to be about me but I'm still going to be trying to figure out what does it mean for me to embrace who God made me to be? How do I reflect the sun's light, Jesus the sun, like the moon, so that people can see clearly who he is and his goodness and embrace who God called me to be? So let's talk about it in a group.